Hello everyone. Welcome back to the series of lectures in endocrinology. So we were talking about adrenal disorders and in the last class we have dealt with Cushing syndrome. Now we will be talking about mineralocorticoid excess. So let's begin. So what is the most common cause for mineralocorticoid excess? So what is the most common cause for mineralocorticoid excess? It is adrenal hyperplasia. Okay, so bilateral adrenal hyperplasia is the most common cause of mineralocorticoid excess. Then what is this Kohn's syndrome? What is this Kohn's syndrome? So this is basically mineralocorticoid excess that occurs due to aldosterone production or an aldosterone producing adrenal adenoma. Aldosterone producing adrenal adenoma. Okay. So, bilateral adrenal hyperplasia and aldosterone producing adrenal adenoma is your con syndrome. So, these two are in fact make up for the majority of the percentage for the causes for mineralocorticoid excess. Okay. So, these two make up for the majority of the etiologies for mineralocorticoid excess. Now, let us look at all the etiologies for mineralocorticoid excess one by one. Okay. So, the first etiology. The first etiology is your Kohn's syndrome. Okay, so what is Kohn's syndrome? It is basically an aldosterone producing adrenal adenoma. Okay, so what are the mutations that are associated with Kohn's syndrome? We have your GERC4, which is accounting for 40% of the cases, then ATPS3 mutations and CACNA mutations. This is a potassium channel, this is your ATPS. And CACNA gene basically responsible for calcium channel. Okay, so mutations in any of these genes can result in the formation of an adrenal adenoma which produces aldosterone. Then bilateral micronodular adrenal hyperplasia, right? So, due to unknown reasons, there is adrenal hyperplasia of micronodular type which can result in the production of aldosterone. Fine, then other causes are little. Rarer causes for your Kohn syndrome and what are these rarer causes? First, GRA. GRA is glucocorticoid, glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism. Glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism. So, what happens here is that there is a crossover between your cytochrome p11b1 and 11b2 genes. There is a crossover between these two genes such that ACTH finally results in aldosterone secretion. Generally, we know that your aldosterone is independent of the ACTH action and it is directly under the control of the RAS system. But in this form of a genetic mutation, what happens is that in GRA, the glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism, ACTH is finally causing stimulation of aldosterone that is the mistake there and why is it called GRA because what is the treatment the treatment here is glucocorticoids so when you give exogenous glucocorticoids the ACTH will be inhibited and hence aldosterone will not be activated and hence glucocorticoid is the treatment in this condition and that's why it's called as GRA okay clear so this is one of the rarer forms for the rarer causes for your hyperaldosteronism or mineralocorticoid excess. Then same, same is syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid excess. Same is syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid excess. So what happens in this condition? This is also one of the rarer conditions for mineralocorticoid excess. So cortisol is converted into an inactive form. Cortisol is converted into an inactive form which is your cortisone. Okay. So, what happens in your syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid receptor is that cortisol is not activated into its inactive form cortisone. So, what happens? The cortisol levels will be high and excess of cortisol causes activation of the mineralocorticoid receptor and hence it looks like mineralocorticoid is in excess. That's why it's called a syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid excess. Okay. So, this is about your same, where cortisol is not converted into cortisone and excess cortisol is causing your excess mineralocorticoid stimulation. 
Fine? Okay. Then, Cushing syndrome. In Cushing syndrome, why can there be mineralocorticoid excess? Yes, because in Cushing syndrome, excess cortisol can cause activation of the mineralocorticoid receptor. Then, glucocorticoid resistance syndrome is a rare syndrome where there is resistance to the action of glucocorticoids. So, excess glucocorticoids, excess mineralocorticoids. Excess glucocorticoids causes stimulation of excess mineralocorticoid via mineralocorticoid receptor activation. Then, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, we had just discussed the 11 beta and 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency is associated with mineralocorticoid excess. Okay. In 11 beta and 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency, there is mineralocorticoid excess. Then, in Liddell syndrome, there is a mutation in the epithelium sodium ion channel, which is your ENAC, which is present in the distal convoluting tubule. So, ENAC mutations result in Liddell's syndrome. The treatment for this is by giving your ENAC channel inhibitors like amyloride. Fine. So, let us put things back into perspective. So, what are we discussing? We are discussing about mineralocorticoid excess and the etiologies. The majority of the causes is because of Kohn's syndrome where there can be an adenoma producing aldosterone or because of bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. The other rarer causes are these syndromes, which is your GRA, syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid excess, then glucocorticoid resistance, little syndrome. Okay, so we have looked at all of these etiologies. Fine. Now let us understand the clinical features of mineralocorticoid excess. Now briefly, we had touched upon all of this in our chapter on approach to hypokalemia as well. So let us just revise that once more. So, what is the main action of mineralocorticoid? When we say mineralocorticoid, we are talking about aldosterone. We are talking about aldosterone. So, this aldosterone is mainly involved in most important function. It is volume regulation, volume status regulation. So, what is the action of aldosterone? It reabsorbs sodium and water and it excretes potassium. So, aldosterone is basically responsible for maintaining the volume status. Whenever there is hypovolemia, for example, there is a decreased renal perfusion pressure. Decreased renal perfusion is going to cause stimulation of renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway, which is finally going to increase aldo. Aldosterone will help in retaining salt and water to bring back the BP to normal. And in the meanwhile, it secretes potassium or excretes potassium. So, if this aldo is in excess, if aldo is in excess, there is going to be more sodium and water retention. More sodium and water retention is going to cause what? It is going to cause hypertension. In certain individuals, it can be associated with edema as well. So, we can say that hyperaldosteronism is one of the causes for resistance, resistant hypertension or an individual who is requiring more than three classes of antihypertensives to control his hypertension or hypertension in a young individual less than 40 years of age, you have to think about mineralocorticoid excess. Okay, clear? So, this is the first clinical feature. Second, metabolic alkalosis. So, what happens is that we are looking at the distal convoluted tube. We are looking at the distal convoluted tubule. So, in your distal convoluted tubule, when there is excess sodium and water delivery, there is excess sodium and water delivery to the DCT. Now, what happens is there is a negative potential which is created in your luminal site. To compensate for this, there is hydrogen and potassium which is coming out. Now, because of this hydrogen X creation, what happens to the acid base status in the body? There is metabolic alkalosis. So, there is metabolic alkalosis with hypokalemia in your aldosterone excess. That is how aldosterone functions. So, if aldosterone is more, there is going to be metabolic alkalosis with hypokalemia, right? So, in your DCT, what is the mechanism? Sodium and water has to be reabsorbed. If sodium and water has to be reabsorbed, something has to come out and that is your potassium and hydrogen and it is hence loss of potassium and hydrogen causes metabolic alkalosis with hypokalemia. Okay? So, this is about the various clinical features of 
mineral corticoid excess. Now, what is this Cushing's syndrome? So, Cushing syndrome with Cohn syndrome is called as Cushing syndrome. Cushing syndrome with Cohn syndrome is Cushing syndrome. That means there is glucocorticoid plus mineralocorticoid excess. There is glucocorticoid plus mineralocorticoid excess. This is your Cushing syndrome. Okay, clear? So. Young onset hypertension, resistant hypertension, metabolic alkalosis with hypokalemia is your feature of mineralocorticoid excess. Okay. Now let us understand how do you diagnose your mineralocorticoid excess. So whenever there is a mineralocorticoid excess, whenever there is a mineralocorticoid excess, aldosterone levels will be elevated. Will be elevated. For example, if there is an aldosterone producing adenoma or bilateral adrenal hyperplasia causing aldosterone excess, aldosterone level will be elevated. What happens to the renin levels? What happens to the renin levels? The renin will be low because here also there is feedback inhibition. Renin causes stimulation of aldosterone. So, aldosterone high, renin is inhibited. So, the ratio that we use which is your aldorenin ratio aldosterone to renin ratio which we call as the ARR is the screening test which is used in the diagnosis of mineralocorticoid excess. So, we use the aldosterone to renin ratio and what will you expect the ARR to be? The ARR will be elevated. The ARR will be elevated. But in conditions where in conditions where it is not a problem with your adrenal, it is not adenoma, it is not hyperplasia. It is one of those genetic conditions like your syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid excess, GRA, Liddell syndrome where there are mutations. In those conditions will the ARR will be elevated? No, the ARR will be reduced or normal in where? In your glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism, syndrome of apparent mineralocorticoid excess or your Liddell's disease. Okay, fine. So, this is about your screening test. So, how do you do this? ARR is very very important and you should know what drug interactions can happen with your ARR. Okay. So, completely correct the hypokalemia before you go ahead and test for the ARR. Right. Then drugs. This is the list of drugs. Now, why is this important? Because I told you that mineralocorticoid excess generally presents as resistant or refractory hypertension. So, because this is a resistant or refractory hypertension, patient will be on multiple antihypertensive drugs. So, we should be aware of how each antihypertensive drug can affect the ARR. So, if you really have to find out the cause for you are quite trying to find out the etiology of the resistant hypertension or your hypertension in the young, then you have to know the interactions of these drugs with the ARR because the first test you will do is an aldosterone renin ratio. Fine. So, first drug beta blockers. So, beta blockers decrease the renin and increase the aldo. So, they increase the ARR. They increase the ARR. Then ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors increase the renin, decrease the aldo. They decrease the ARR. Angiotensin receptor blockers also decrease the ARR. Okay. So, if the patient has been on Another drug which I forgot is your spironolactone, spironolactone which is an aldosterone antagonist. So, if these patients are on these drugs, then spironolactone has to be stopped for at least 4 weeks. It has to be stopped for at least 4 weeks before you do the testing. So, similarly, your ACE inhibitors, ARBs, if the patient is already on, that also has to be stopped for at least 2 to 3 weeks before you do the ARR, right? And beta blockers also have to be stopped. So, but this is very difficult to achieve because the patient may be a resistant hypertension patient. You cannot take off all the medications at once. So, before starting medications, if you are planning to evaluate the patient, then remember there are few drugs with, on which the patient can be if you are testing your aldosterone renin ratio. That is your alpha blockers and calcium channel blockers. Okay. How do diuretics affect the ARR? They can decrease the ARR. Overall ratio can be decreased. Okay, so the two drugs which you can continue is your calcium channel blocker and alpha blockers because they do not affect the ARR. So, calcium channel blockers and alpha blockers can be continued before testing for this. Okay, clear till here. Once your screening test has come positive, your aldosterone renin ratio has come 
elevated, then you will have to do a few confirmatory tests. So the confirmatory test that you should be aware of, it's just for your awareness, saline infusion test. So you give IV saline 2 liters. When you give IV saline, that means what? Patient is volume repleted. If your patient is volume repleted, then your RAS system will be activated or inhibited. Your RAS system should be inhibited because the main aim of the RAS system is to reabsorb sodium and water, maintain the volume status. If the patient is volume repleted, the RAS system is inhibited, your ALDO levels should be low and your renin levels should also decrease. But in your saline infusion test, if the IV saline of 2 litre fails to suppress the levels to less than 140 picomoles per litre, then this is positive for your mineralocorticoid excess. Similarly, we do a salt loading test and a fluidrocortisone suppression test. So these are the confirmatory tests for mineralocorticoid excess. Now let us look at the diagnosis and how do you approach this patient whom you are suspecting to have mineralocorticoid excess. So clinical suspicion of mineralocorticoid excess, when do you suspect this we have discussed? Severe hypertension more on more than three groups of drugs or drug resistant hypertension. Second, hypokalemia. Then, if there is a spontaneous or a diuretic induced hypokalemia, moment you give a diuretic is going into hypokalemia. Okay. Third, presence of an adrenal mass. You patient has come for evaluation of hypertension, do an ultrasound, you find an adrenal mass. Family history of early onset hypertension, less than 40 years of age. So, these are the group of patients whom you want to test for your aldosterone excess. So, then you do your screening test, you do your ARR. So, you stop spironolactone for 4 weeks, correct your hypokalemia and do your ARR. If the ARR is positive to value more than 750, okay, if the patient is on beta blockers, you stop it for 2 weeks. If the ARR is positive, aldosterone renin ratio is positive to a value of more than 750 picomoles per liter, then you will have to confirm the diagnosis using your saline infusion test or fluidrocortisone test. Okay, fine. Now, after this, you will have to do an unenhanced CT of the adrenals to find out the etiology. You will have to do an unenhanced CT of the adrenal to find out the etiology. If there is a unilateral adrenal mass less than 40 years of age, please do an adrenalectomy. If this is bilateral micronodular hyperplasia, then you may have to do a drug treatment because you cannot remove both the um, adrenals and the treatment of choice will be a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist like spironolactone or amyloride or amyloride. Okay, fine. So unilateral adrenal mass, you remove it bilaterally, you start them on medical management. We move on to when there is a normal adrenal morphology. If the family history is positive, if the family history is positive, then you can think of GRA, which is your glucocorticoid remediable aldosteronism. And in that case, you can treat them with glucocorticoids. Or in conditions where the ARR is normal, ARR is normal, then it means that it could be one of those rare genetic conditions. So in that case, you will have to do a 24-hour urinary steroid profile. If 24-hour urinary steroid profile and you will have to diagnose for same or congenital hypoplasia or little syndrome. Okay. So I hope this approach is clear. Once the screening test for ARR is positive, then you do a confirmatory test. If that is also positive, do a CT, find out if it's adenoma or hyperplasia and treat accordingly. Adenoma, you have to do a surgery. Hyperplasia, you treat them. If ARR is normal, think of those genetic conditions and treat accordingly. All right. So with this, we have come to the end of our discussion on mineralocorticoid excess.